Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to ELEC three two zero four. So today we are going to finish uh, my part of the slides. Um, we have already covered uh, some of them, um, including uh, STBC and SDMA. So it wouldn't be a lot of uh, content left, and. Uh, before I finish today, I will touch upon the coursework again. Um, if you have any questions, you can actually uh, uh, message on, on the on the chat uh, window. Um, so I'll see if I can answer them uh, at the end of the lecture. Uh, so uh, last time we uh, actually Wednesday last week we finished on here. So if uh, Y is a received signal and X is what we transmitted, and then we have uh, noise, and one is BPSK. This is a uh, AWGN channel. The performance is like this. And when we have a fading, a fast fading a factor, then the performance become like this. So fading is really detrimental. Um, in reality, it is pretty much uh, the biggest uh, challenge in wireless communications. Uh, and AWGN, when we only have noise, is uh, the best scenario. So it's like upper bound. So normally what we do um, about fading is uh, we often deploy multiple antennas uh, like what you see in your coursework instruction. So uh, last time we did talk a little bit about diversity. So for example, when we have received signal, transmitted signal, and then noise, this is a fading variable. So we know that fading, it, uh, it would fluctuate over time. So if during the signal transmission, uh, it happens to be in deep fade, then the whole frame of uh, whole frame of signal transmission would uh, have a, a really weak received signal. So you have really low chance of recovering what was transmitted. Um, so diversity is if you have multiple copies of uh, of the same signal, so somehow you you send out the same signal to different channels. Then uh, when one uh, fading element is in deep fade, the other one might be uh, may may be better, so you have a higher chance of. Of, a re of receiving a stronger signal. You have a higher chance of recovering what was transmitted. So that's diversity. So how do we find uh, uh, extra channel uh, to get this diversity again? So we can do it in frequency domains. <clears throat> so we, we transmit the same signal over different fre frequency bands. So we get the uh, same copy, oh, we got copies of the same signal from different frequency bands, or we transmit over two time slots. So we get uh, time diversity, or we transmit over different antennas, then we get spatial diversity. And when we use multiple antennas um, as a receiver, we get received diversity. When we use multiple antennas as the transmitter, we get transmit diversity. Here's an example. There are a lot of words, but basically for case one, there's no diversity. This is a received signal model. So you transmit X, you transmit X, and then experienced a fading, and then noise, you received the signal here. Uh, for case two, we will have two copies. First one is here, and then second one is here. 
So we got two copies of the original transmitted signal, the same, the same signal, right? It's uh, both eyes. And we need to normalize uh, the power. So here we normalize fading power uh, so that the total power is the same. In your course work, you are supposed to normalize on the transmitted signal. So 0 0.5, uh, if it's multiplied on the transmitted signal, then the total power is normalized. That's, <clears throat> that's normally how we use MIMO. So if uh, system A has one antenna, and then system B has multiple antenna. So the regulation is always on the total radiation power. <clears throat> so if uh, uh, you regulate the total radio, uh, radiation power, for the first case, the, all the power is uh, transmitted by uh, one antenna. And for the second scheme, uh, all the powers shared by all the antennas. So by increasing the number of antennas, uh, you shouldn't have higher radiation power. That's uh, what's regulated uh, in reality. So because of this regulation, we have the same. We have the same average as an R because we always normalize uh, the total power. Uh, but but the difference is uh, we have different instantaneous SR. For for the first case, when there is no diversity, uh, we have only one fitting element. Uh, fitting element. Uh, for case two, when there is diversity, we have two fitting elements. So if one of them is in deep fade, the other one might be. There is a chance that the other ones are uh, better then the overall performance might be better. But there is no cert complete certainty for each time instant. Um, so the more, the higher diversity gain you have, so, so the, the more copies you have, the higher chance that you get a good signal reception. So here we assume that the fading is uh, really fading. So real part and imaginary part of the fading element are, modu are modeled by Gaussian distribution. So we know that the power would uh, obey chi-square distribution. Uh, we did this before to uh, derive a uh, rise and relay distribution of the fast fading uh, distribution. So when there is no um, when, when, there's, when, when there's no diversity, we have two degree of freedom. When there is uh, diversity, we have four degree of freedom. Um, so if we plot the PDF, we see here that uh, the solid line is for when there is no diversity again. So there's a higher chance that all the power is concentrated um, at low SR region. So over over this whole region, we can see that when we have diversity, we have a higher probability that SR instantaneous SR is higher. So we have a higher chance of uh, having a better uh, signal reception. Um, so this translates to uh, we have a higher chance of having uh, a worse BR for no diversity case than uh, the case we're having diversity. So if we have um, a total number of L uh, observations. So maybe we use uh, either L antennas or use L time slots or use L uh, frequency bands to get 
uh, L number of uh, observations of the same signal. So I'll copy this. Then the PDF is, we will have L degree of freedom. Um, so can anyone still remember how do we calculate the error probability? So if it's a PPSK, uh, what we transmitted is plus one and minus, uh, minus one. Where is the decision boundary? Where is the decision boundary, guys? Any guesses? Yes. So the decision boundary is in the middle. Uh, it's zero. The only probability we know is uh, Gaussian uh, noise uh, PDF. And the error occurs when uh, the PDF tail cross over the decision boundary. So we need to take integral and also the probability of PDF of the uh, of the noise. Then we get a closed form. You are not required to work out the, the, the steps that are missing in the middle. Um, but the significance of this equation is that it tells us here that uh, this is a double channel. This is a relay channel without diversity. So as uh, uh, as the diversity order increases, the performance would approach to AW drain channels performance, which is uh, pretty much the upper bound. So what is the cost? What is the cost of uh, improving the performance towards a double drain channel? Any guesses? What is a uh, what is the cause of diversity uh, diversity gain? So in order to, to get a better performance, you always have to pay the price. Um, you know, either deploy more antennas, or you use more frequency bands, or you use more time slots. All of those are um, kind of natural resources. So what we do here is not really that different from finding pastoralism in a field and pay the price. Um, so here we have, I have explained um, the difference between frequency diversity, time diversity, and spatial diversity. So we can achieve diversity again by using uh, different frequency bands or uh, different time slots, different frequency bands or different time slots, or using uh, antennas separated uh, by sufficient distance in space. We're going to talk about uh, a little bit more about MIMO. Um, so uh, you have probably already suffered quite a lot from uh, the inconsistencies of terminologies and notations. Um, so that's that's why it's so important when uh, industry evolves um, over different generations, there is a, a standardization body that uh, regulates uh, st standards across the globe. Um, so we have uh, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, and they are all standardized, but they cannot standardize everything that would kill uh, uh, creativity. So what they normally do is they standardize on the signal transmission on the transmit of the transmitter, uh, but they allow flexibility of how you process signal as a receiver. Uh, but anyway, in in industry, uh, they try to regulate um, concepts, 
and signal processing uh, rules. Um, but in academia, often when you, for example, when you when you propose a paper, a proposal scheme and write a paper, um, it's more important to explain what it is than regulating the notation time, notation uh, rules and even the name of the terminology. So you have searched uh, STBC. There are also different names for STBC, and even for uh, four times four. Uh, STBC, you probably have seen different uh, co uh, code words, so different patterns. Sometimes the same patterns, um, but it's probably a commission transport, uh, sorry, transports of the same matrix. And they have different names like cosine or circle or STBC, or it's also sometimes called STC, so sp space time coding. Um, but uh, it's important that um, you understand the concept and uh, in exams, stick to uh, the slides, uh, which is the same safe choice. And uh, for your coursework, it's really a learning process that you work out uh, the rationale behind all these terminologies. And then you provide a solution of yourself. So the coursework is about um, uh, getting the best performance you can get, and then you show that to us so that we mark on the best performance uh, you get. So you, it's really up to you to provide a solution. So anyway, here we have uh, uh, four schemes uh, summarized under the category of smart antennas. Um, sometimes people just call it uh, MIMO, but uh, yeah, so how can antennas be smart? Um, so the first uh, concept here is called beam forming arrangement. Um, what it does is, for example, when you, when you have a base base station, you can deploy a lot of uh, antennas uh, on each angle, a lot of antennas. And then you receive signals from different angles, right? And there is a desired user from this angle. So you want to listen to this user and you want to transmit signal to this user. Um, then all the signals from other directions are uh, interferences. So what beam forming arrangement does is to kind of form a beam to this angle only. So all the, the power of all the other, other angles are surpassed to close to zero. So we can see here, um, wait, sorry. So we can see here, okay, we can see here that uh, th these are different angles. And if it's a base station and it receive a signals from different angle, only one angle we uh, receive signal and then transmit signal. And all the other angles we kind of try to surpass the power of all the other angles. So that's been forming arrangement. So it's uh, for the sake of supporting uh, multiple user scenario, but we try to do interference cancellation. And somehow I can't cancel this uh, highlight. But anyway, the second the second concept of a smart antenna is diversity uh, motivated multiple antenna scheme. Uh, so you have seen them in your coursework instruction. You transmit the same signal uh, in different forms uh, over different antennas and over 
uh, different time slots. So you get copies of the same signal as a receiver. You, uh, you have a higher chance of recovering what was transmitted. Um, even if one fading is uh, fading, even if one fading is in deep fade. So that's second one. The third one is SDMA. So you have a base station, and then you have users at different locations. They uh, transmit signal to the base station at the same time. Uh, as the same frequency band, um, so they would interfere with each other. So can anyone remember how do we cancel that interference as a receiver at base station? We covered this last time, and uh, I have emphasized for coursework. Anyone awake? <laughs> So the reason I ask question is because I, I, it's not because I want to trick you, it's because I want to emphasize on, on the race. And also, um, it will be helpful. OK, so the question is, when, when we have different users transmitting signal to the base station, so you have interference here. So how do we mitigate interference as a base station? Or let me rephrase, how do we cancel the fading? Yes, so we do correlation and then decorrelating to cancel the fading. So when the fading is canceled, there is only noise in signal transmission. So it's like parallel transmission. There's no interference. Um, so we will we'll look at SDMA again at the, at the end of today's lecture, um, and I will emphasize uh, the importance of it in our coursework. Um, and then the third, uh, sorry, the fourth uh, smart antenna scheme is um, when we have much here, when we have multiple antennas, uh, so the last time I told you about the diversity transmission pattern. So for Alamotis STBC, we have the first antenna transmitting X1. Sorry, the first antenna transmitting X1. And then the second antenna transmitting X2. This is the first time slot. And then the second time slot for Alamotis STBC, we transmit X2. Conjugate and then X1. So it's kind of uh, repeated information here. So there's repetition. Uh, in fact, an alternative is uh, we can transmit X1 and X2 and then X3 and X4 in the second time slot. So this pattern would give us more throughput, a higher throughput. So this is uh, called single, single user MIMO. It would give us a higher throughput. However, it would also give us uh, interference. So different antennas, they would interfere with each other. So for different MIMO schemes, we have, we always have, um, we always have the same um, or, or similar MIMO received signal representation. So this is what, what we transmitted and we go through the fading uh, channel and then we get the received signal. So if the transmitted signals are from different users, part of uh, the transmitted uh, signal vector uh, is from user one, and then the other is from other users. Um, so if you have STBC, the transmitted signal vector become a matrix that span over a longer period of time. So, uh, but it's still the same for March. 
Um, so we have this general memo uh, form. So this is uh, the fitting matrix. So we have, uh, for this example, we have, I think we have n transmit antennas, oh, okay, n transmit antennas and n receive antennas. So anyway, this was also shown in the supporting document uh, that I showed you last time uh, on Friday. So diversity here can be uh, implemented by using uh, many antennas as a receiver. So we have single input, multiple output, and you have received diversity. Or you use multiple antennas as a transmitter. So you have transmit diversity. Um, so it's also called MISO. And uh, also you can have multiple antennas as a transmitter and multiple antennas as a receiver. So you have MIMO diversity. So for we we'll have only one signal transmitted and we have so one transmit antenna. Then you have multiple receive antennas. So the receive signal is uh, like this. So you have multiple fitting elements. So what we do as a receiver is we do correlation operation. When there is no interference, because we only have one signal here, there's no interference. Cor correlation operation itself is enough. So after correlation operation, we only have the power of the fitting. So some powers will be better, some powers will be worse, um, but we average it so we get a diversity gain. So the diversity order here is n because we have n copies. So we have n powers of uh, fading, n power, n fading powers. So it's like uh, going through uh, this one signal uh, through n parallel uh, fading channels. Uh, MISO system, right, so we can have either closed loop or open loop. So what is closed loop, what is open loop? So for your coursework, it's all open loop because there is no feedback from the transmitter to the receiver. So we have a transmitter, we have a receiver, So how do we know the fitting channel? We need to know the fitting channel, right? So normally what we do is we transmit a signal that is known to both transmitter and the receiver. So for example, we just transmit signal one. We just transmit one from the transmitter and to the receiver. So normally, the signal model is something like this. And if you transmit just one, then what you received is the fading and the noise. Suppose when we try to estimate the fading, we use the higher SNR, so noise is ignored. Then the receiver would be able to know what the fading element is. So the receiver can know ARVA by using this uh, signal. This si signal is also called pilot. It is known to both the transmitter and the receiver. So what closed loop is, we feed back to the transmitter uh, on what alpha is, so, so that the transmitter also knows what alpha is, so that the transmitter can mitigate the fading. Um, so for example, when you have the transceiver, uh, the receive signal model of this. So this is a uh, fitting element um, from the transmitter and to, to the receiver. If the transmitter knows uh, what the fitting is, what the transmitter can do is to do the conjugate 
as a transmitter. So what the transmitter actually transmitted was this whole thing. So when the fading as uh, the signal, so the signal travels through the channel as a receiver, what you get here is the power of the fading. That is uh, in our favor because the receiver doesn't have to do anything anymore. Uh, the fading is mitigated at the transmitter. So, so another thing I I, need, I should emphasize is that um, naturally for fading elements we have both phase and amplitude, but normally phase is really really detrimental. Uh, detrimental. So, uh, when the phase can be uh, mitigated, so we know. When we know the phase of the fading element, we cancel the phase. Uh, if that's enough, then we have this power, only this fading power uh, as a receiver. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, however, in our decorrelating operation, we cancel out the fading completely. Um, by doing that, we kind of um, we kind of um, do alpha power here on the noise as well. We'll talk about uh, we'll talk about uh, the disadvantage of doing that uh, later. But anyway, uh, from here it's the only thing. Uh, uh, we are talking about is closed loop. So closed loop is when we estimate the channel as a receiver, and then we feed back this to the transmitter, so that the transmitter can mitigate it uh, during signal transmission. So um, pilot is a signal that's known by the transmitter and the receiver. So you can just transmit, for example, signal one, and then the receiver, what the receiver received is a fading element and the noise. So if uh, the SNR is high, then uh, the, uh, what you get is uh, the fading. So you, you get an estimate of what the fading element is. Uh, so suppose now the transmitter also knows uh, what the fading uh, channel is. So what we, this is very important, you should be able to uh, write the steps of uh, of this uh, page um, if it occurred in exam. So um, so it, what it does is uh, we have fading channel like this. And then uh, as a transmitter, we know that fading channel now. What we do as a transmitter is we do the correlation operation as a transmitter so over the multiple transmitter antennas, the signal we transmitted is uh, this whole thing. The data carrying signal is X, so X carries uh, information, but W would cancel out the phase in the fading. So as a receiver, you received uh, this, uh, uh, this whole thing here. Uh, it automatically become uh, signal power because W is the Hermitian transpose of uh, fading. So we only have signal power here. So the diversity order is M. We have M uh, fading powers. So it's like transmitting the same signal over M channels uh, in parallel without interference. So this is a closed loop. Right, so last time we did uh, talk about uh, SGBC. Uh, the first one is orthogonal transmit uh, diversity code. So the transmission pattern is like this. And then the receive signal, and then we get uh, decision variables, uh, Z1 to uh, detect uh, X1, and Z2 to detect X2. Um, please refer to um, 
the supporting document that I uh, wrote by my hand um, is available on the course website. And I also uh, explained this uh, uh, on last Friday. And then on Amortis SGBC, we have transmission pattern like this. And then we have received signal. And then we have decision variables like this for detecting X1 and X2. Um, so I'm going to just uh, I'm just going going to go through this uh, quickly because we have already spent quite a lot lot of time <coughs> last time on this. So diversity when we have STBC and when we have multiple receive antennas. So here we have M receive antennas. <clears throat> the transmission pattern is still like this. We tra transform this into the equivalent STBC received signal model. So we have Y1, Y2 for detecting X1, X2. So we try to avoid re repetition on the, on the transmitted signal. And then we stack uh, all the signals uh, from different receiver. <clears throat> we stack signals from different receiver antennas together. So we have a really big matrix for the receive signal matrix. And uh, we have a really big matrix for the fading matrix. The transmit signal matrix uh, vector is still only X1 and X2. <clears throat> So what we need to do here is we need to do correlation operation like this. And what we get is a scaled identity matrix. So there is no interference. So correlation operation here is enough because of the transmission pattern that's defined by Alamotis SGBC as orthogonal. <clears throat> So with uh, multiple receiver antennas, we have correlation operation, and we have um, uh, the whole fading uh, matrix as uh, identity scaled identity matrix. So the diversity order here is two m because we have m, and then we have two uh, powers here. So it's like transmitting the same signal over two M channels without interference. Does it still apply ways? Um, so it depends on the transmission pattern. Um, so you probably have already uh, seen cosine also on ICBC, so for four by four <clears throat> STC. <clears throat> some uh, some of them still applies, some of them don't. So I did send out a, an email last week um, that the supporting document is in line with the slides. Um, so it's actually not a method I normally use myself. Um, but it's valid for some STBCs. So it's valid for Alamotis STBC. So the going through the supporting document will be helpful for your exams. Um, but for other STBCs, sometimes we use other methods. For example, for cosine ozone STBC, uh, there will be interference. So the easiest uh, method for you is still to do decorrelating. So correlation and decorrelating method is universal for MIMO. I will, I will, uh, I will talk about uh, what is the disadvantage of decorrelating method <clears throat> a little bit, and also give you some tips of how on how to improve it a little bit further. If you um, if you still have time after you finish your coursework, you can further improve. Uh, the performance, so you have a better higher mark. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Um, I will touch upon it uh, again later.
So ST, uh, sorry, STMA, <coughs> we have different uh, users. <coughs> so let me emphasize again, sorry. Um, we, we did talk a lot about interference. Uh, so STBC design is uh, highly uh, optimized in a way that uh, it optimizes the transmission pattern. Uh, here. So it's kind of orthogonal. If you if you treat this as a matrix and then just multiply its Hermitian transport, what you'll see will be like a scaled identity matrix. That's why we can get uh, this form. But this form is not compulsory. There are other ways of uh, arriving at um, arriving at uh, here. For example, uh, for the for the STBC, uh, 4x4 STBC on the Wikipedia page, you have three symbols transmitting over uh, four time slots and uh, four antennas. Uh, you can arrive at the same place, but the method will be slightly, slightly different. What you should do is uh, try to work out from here so that STPC code on Wikipedia page is completely orthogonal. So you can you can separate them without interference. But if you transmit four symbols over four uh, four antennas and over four time slots, uh, that's uh, that one uh, you have seen on the internet is called cosine orthogonal STPC. So it's not completely orthogonal anymore. Um, so when it's not orthogonal, there will be interference. When there is interference, uh, the method you have learned now is uh, decorrelating. <clears throat> so no matter, no matter what the transmission pattern of each user use, when you have multiple users, you, are, you will have interference. So this is, uh, this is when you have K users and uh, are transmitting at the same time, and they would interfere with each other. You can also put this into a big uh, matrix for uh, for the transmit tra for the transmit uh, signal and for the fading. So this is what you see in the coursework instruction, except that uh, the equation in the coursework uh, uh, instruction is uh, transpose of uh, this form. So rows become columns. And then uh, let me quickly get to the final point. So what you do is first you want to do correlation operation. So you multiply Hermitian transpose of H. So we were we were hoping that by doing this we can cancel the the phase of the fading. So if it become diagonal matrix with only powers on the diagonal line, then we cancel the phase. But when there is interference, uh, there are other elements um, in the matrix, not only the diagonal line. So it's no longer an identity matrix. So correlation operation is not enough anymore. So what we have to do is decorrelating. So in this form, we can see that the fitting is completely canceled. So can anyone tell me what is the disadvantage of this? Any guesses? So here it seems uh, quite easy to apply because we cancel the fitting completely. No matter what the memo form is, either it's STBC or we transmit um, uh, signals uh, without STPC pattern. Um, in the end, we have we have MIMO representation like this, and then we can cancel the fading. So, what is the disadvantage here? Can anyone tell me? Any guesses? It's a very difficult difficult question. Sorry for checking you here. So the reason here is the noise would be amplified. So when we do correlation operation, 
we try to mitigate the face, the face of uh, the fading, the face of the fading. So when we multiply this, uh, the noise power is not necessarily amplified. But what we do here is to completely cancel the fading. So we know that the fading has face, has amplitude. So what, what it does in here is pretty much like uh, multiply um, fading power to inverse like this to the noise. So we have a really high chance that noise is canceled. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the coursework. Let me share my screen. So uh, this is the other supporting document uh, I sent to you by email. Uh, it's a very long paper. You can see it on HB Explore. Uh, I did send you the link. I will send you again later. So the first um, tip I'm going to give you is for STBC. So this is actually the method I, I personally normally use. Um, which is uh, a little bit more uh, universal. <clears throat> so here you can see we uh, try to get the decision variable for detecting each symbol. And there are code constructions uh, for four antennas. This is the first one. And then this is the second one. Um, this is still orthogonal. And this is cosine orthogonal, which is uh, uh, the one many of you have uh, seen on the internet. Um, so, so yeah, there are different code word constructions. Um, you can have a look. Um, I would be really sad if uh, all of you are using the same uh, code word uh, for STBC. So if all of you are using the same for four, four times to four um, <clears throat> transmission pattern, and all of you use uh, the correlating method and then average the repetition. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to give you another tip here. Um, so here uh, is a scheme called wave blast, which is uh, when we use MIMO transmission and we use different antennas to transmit different signals. So there will be interference uh, for, for, for different antennas. So what we do here is we have different names for the same thing again. So much the filter here is equivalent to, is actually a correlation operation. So what we do here is we multiply the Hermitian transpose of the uh, of the fading matrix to the received signal, <clears throat> so this is correlation operation. It's also called much future filter uh, method. The second method is also called zero forcing. It is the decorrelating method. So what we do is we completely cancel the fading. So we we did correlation and then. This is R in the slice. This whole thing is R in the slice. And then we multiply the, uh, we do the matrix inverse. So this is decorrelating. The disadvantage of this is it would amplify the noise. So if you want to improve the performance a little bit further, what you can try is uh, something called MMSE methods. So minimum mean square arrow. Uh, so when you do the matrix inverse, you also take into account the noise power. So it's it's not it's not very difficult. It's not a huge modification. So you already do the inverse on the uh, correlation matrix, with, which is a fading matrix multiplied by its Hermitian transpose. If you just add uh, noise power and then identity matrix. So uh, NT should be just one. So you uh, in in your case you should only use N zero 
multiply identity metrics. So if you do this, your performance should be should be a bit better. So it's not too much trouble for you, but you get a better performance, and then in the end you get a higher score. And I also hope many of you should uh, be able to try some error correction code. So if you if you search error correction code. Um, you see a lot of options. You can search uh, them in uh, uh, my lab's library to see which ones are available. But make sure that uh, it's not it's not overly complicated. And also, you need to make sure that uh, the number of bits you transmitted uh, per user is uh, is uh, four, right? So. If if you use error correction code, um, for example, if it's a half rate, then you will get eight bits, and then you need to ad adjust uh, the modulation level. So it's probably not QPSK anymore. Um, so that what you transmitted uh, is uh, four symbols or three symbols or whatever, according to based on uh, what code word you choose to use. So on the course website, you have, um, I'll put, I'll send you another email uh, about the document that I just showed you. Um, so this further reading on memo here is uh, linked to uh, the document I just showed you. Uh, so it has uh, as STPC code word construction and it also has MLC detection. So if you want to try MLC detection, um, you can have a look at this document. I will emphasize on the uh, um, on the specific area, uh, pages of that document. You don't have to read it all. Um, that's a really long paper, but uh, you only need to read uh, the STPC part and also the uh, uh, memo detection part. So, right, uh, that's all from me. Um, so next time I see you will be before the exams, I will give you two revision sessions. Uh, if you have any questions, concern, any more questions concerning coursework, uh, you can send me email or you can send